Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. So we will be starting Verilog very soon on our channel. So before starting Verilog, the theory lectures, I wanted to get few things ready before starting with theory. So this is the first uh, thing that I wanted to get ready that what type of compiler we will be using. So we will be using iKeras Verilog. So in the next part, I will discuss how you can install and run any Verilog file on uh, your Windows PC. You can use it for Apple Mac as well. Also, I will provide few links in the comments below so that you can prepare few things before starting the Verilog lectures. So those links will be provided like C++, like computer organization and architecture. So let's start with the installation process with of iKeras Verilog. So in this video, we will exactly discuss how you can install a Verilog simulator in your system and run Verilog codes. Okay, before starting those things, uh, I wanted to mention that if you are new to this channel, make sure you subscribe to my channel and like the videos. And obviously, don't forget to follow this playlist because in this playlist, we will try to cover all concepts related to Verilog. So if you are having difficulties or if you are new to Verilog, trust me, this channel and playlist will help you a lot. All the links will be mentioned in the comments below. And the step-by-step -step procedure to install this iKeras Verilog uh, software we'll discuss now okay so basically right this is an open source free compiler okay and uh, there are a few other compilers as well very low compilers but those were those are a bit heavy those are a bit heavy so we won't be using those we will be using these i uh, icarus verilog is generally used for lighter tasks okay and the other compilers are generally used for heavy tasks so you can go through this website uh, like steps also they have mentioned few resources they have given also you can go through this but i will also uh, explain you first of all i will download the latest one latest one is the first one i verilog version 12 for me it can be something different as well because if you are watching the video in the future they may they might update the verilog uh, software okay so i will download this after downloading i will show you the installation process so this is the setup so first of all few things are very simple and straightforward you have to click on obviously agreement of the accept the agreement of the license agreement then you click next then you uh, decide the uh, location of your iVerilog software so you have to be very careful here i will st uh, uh, like store my program on c drive only so i will not change it and i will also recommend you to not change it keep it on c drive if you want to, you can change the location here. Okay. And now this next step is very, very important. Please double tick these two steps. Okay. Uh, these are few dependencies of iVerilog that will use to plot or to do few other components that will be required. Right. So please don't uncheck mark this. Click on the full installation and install both of this. Okay. Then click on next. Then obviously whatever is there, keep it as it is. Create a program shortcut in the start menu. Now I will create a... Uh, desktop shortcut as well i will add the executable folders to my user path this is very important tick mark this okay why because the uh, like there is a thing known as environment variable in that right your uh, this uh, executable folders must be added to that path this automatically automatically adds to it if it doesn't add right i will also show you how you can manually add the system variables in the environment okay in the path okay i will i'll show you that don't worry now click next then you install now after it finishes the installation next i will uh, tell you how you can add the path of this executable folders on your environment variables now we will discuss how you can edit your environment variables so in the start menu right just type environment environment variables so these two options will come one will tell edit the system environment variables another option will come edit environment variables for your account you will click this edit environment variable for your account after clicking like two uh, tables have come right one is user variables for an each other one is system variables so I, I will choose the user variable for an each i will not do anything in the system variables i will not mess up with that okay so if you scroll down if you scroll below there is a line named a path there is a variable named path so that path inside that path now you select that path now you click edit after you click edit like i have python installed so these things are there for python now these last two things are already present there if you install using the tick mark then these two automatically should be present in the path okay if these are not present in the path right this is one is iverilog bin another one is iverilog gtk wave bin these are the two executable files if these are not present then you copy the same path okay you click new and then you copy the same path and add it to here okay now we will be discussing how you can run a code and simulate your test bench on 
very long with icarus very long so this is the interface uh, this is uh, the vs code so there will be a video link to the video will be given in the comments below you can go and watch that video in that video basically how to use vs code and how to install vs code has been explained in this video basically i will be explaining how to simulate and run a code so don't worry we will be learning this with the live lectures with the lectures as well don't worry about that but here i will give you a bit of bit of overview so to run any code in verilog right you need to have a test bench what is a test bench that has been taught in the full course basically a test bench is a code that provides the uh, like uh, test cases so we will like for a full adder let's say for a uh, full adder right you you will have how many cases four cases your inputs are not four cases sorry for a full adder you will have total eight cases you will have input uh, inputs as a and b another input is c in okay so each a b and c in both can be zero or one so you have two raised to power three that is eight cases so you have to provide some test cases how like who provides that your module is here this is my adder example okay don't worry about the code only this will learn we will learn in uh, like the full course itself for now you have to understand like i have to uh, like simulate like uh, verify my results right i have to give give it some inputs and uh, see the outputs so that is where the test bench comes into the picture more about this when we will learn it in the full course so test bench will call the module that i want to test and test bench will have the code for the test cases these are my test cases for a equal to 0 a equal to uh, 0 b equal to 1 like this okay don't worry you don't know the syntax i know that you don't have to worry about this but just few things that i want you to take care first one is whenever like you you want to test a module right <clears throat> you have written your code on a module and the file name is here right so make sure to have that file name as this uh, like hyphen include address example this file name right should be here okay it should be included then only very log will be able to link the file name where the definition of this adders half adder data flow is stored okay that that's how verilog understands so this will be always there just the file name will change and this also will be always there time scale now as i am operating in one nanosecond time scale that's why one nanosecond is here if you want to operate in some other time scale you can use that so these two things are constant these two things will always be there then this is the variable part that i will add i will add my own test cases this will be variable part okay so like this right here you should not write here okay yeah, this should be there module address statements this will be here uh, you don't have to worry about this but this is the variable part now important portion is this this also will always be there initial begin this dollar sign dumb file and dollar sign uh, dumb variables here the name will be the like whatever name you can give any name you want but generally it is recommended the module that you're using you write that name dot vcd what is a vcd extension VT, vcd extension is a file that basically stores the waveforms the results whatever like let's say you are plotting the clock you're uh, checking the response of clock so you can see the waveforms with vcd file how you will run the vcd file that also i will explain so this will always be there constant this end module also will be there this modules also will be there name will be something like this your actual module name underscore test bench tb you can provide here any name any name is okay but generally we follow a convention that is the fo uh, that is a convention that i follow is tb this is the convention now when you want to run a code right i will just show you an example don't worry in course or as well i multiple times told uh, told you how to run the code so what you need to do is uh, first you come at the top then terminal then click new terminal so new terminal is there now this terminal will open with a different project location okay this is not the location at which my files are present so i will just show you in my uh, file manager so as you can see i am at my file manager location uh, so here right i have the two uh, files one is the actual module another one is the test bench so try to include both of them in the same location it's okay you can include them in different locations but remember when you write that uh, like uh, colon include right in that uh, uh, like semicolon you have to write not semicolon sorry in the inverted commas you have to write the location of the module that you want to test so that you have to take care of so here right, in the top i see this is the location so i will click on this then i will press ctrl c so automatically i have copied my location now right i will show you the uh, vs code so i will open my vs code 
so let's see the VS code. So here, so I am here. So the location that I was talking about this one, you have to change this location then. So now I am at, at my terminal. So I will do CD. CD means change directory to the project location. So then I will uh, like uh, first write inverted commas. I have written inverted commas. Then I will press control V. So the location has been pasted. Then I will end the inverted commas. Then I will press enter. So if it doesn't throw any error, error, that means everything is fine. Now I have changed my directory to my current project location. Now few commands you have to run. First is the iVeryLog. So I hope you have watched the first part of this video, how to install Verilog. iVeryLog is there. Okay, then iVeryLog dash O. O means open file. Then you have to like this is the normal format format that you have to follow for compiling any code in iVeryLog. Okay, this this is fixed for iVeryLog, iKeras Verilog. For other types of Verilog, it may other uh, types of compilers it may be different. So I will be using iKeras Verilog. So dash O then you write write the uh, like name of the file where you want to store the outputs so this will be the vvv file so vvp file so i want to store my outputs at dot address example vvp so what is the vvp basically it is just a file extension for storing the results so here right if i have this display statement this monitor statements don't worry we'll learn this later on these statements has to be stored somewhere so this will be printed this will be stored somewhere it will be stored in this file so we will open this file after the compilation of our code then i will press space now i pressed space then i will uh, here what i will do you can either after pressing space right you can either directly write the name of the file or you can write tab if you if we press on the tab button right automatically few file names will come okay so you will keep on pressing tab and it will oscillate between other file names. It will change between other file names. So you will choose the file name which has the test bench. You will choose that Verilog file which has the test bench because ultimately you will be compiling the test bench and your test bench will actually be calling the module. This is the module half added data flow that I'm calling here. Okay. So don't worry. All this will be explained in the full course. Just I'm showing you how to run any code. Then I will press enter. And as I press enter, it has not thrown out any error. If let's say I would have made any mistake, right? It would have thrown out error like this. It says something like error, no directly something like that. If some mistake I will do, then it will throw out error. So you uh, try to see what error it is printing and then, then accordingly you fix it. So I will again uh, rewrite, rewrite this, press enter. So it, it has compiled. Now what you have to do, you have to write VBP. VBP is just a command for opening the VBB file. So then VVP you write, then you write, uh, then you press tab. If I press, keep on pressing tab, then this file name will come, right? Address example VVP. Then I will press enter. Now if I press enter, you see I'm getting some outputs. So you don't, you don't have to worry like how is this output getting printed, all those things. Just I'm getting some outputs. Ignore this statement as well. This statement is just the VCT file getting dumped. Ignore this statement as well. This will be fixed always. Okay. So it is just showing how my adder is working. Now let's say you want to plot few waveforms or you want to see the waveforms, output waveforms. How will you see the output waveforms? So there is another command and the output waveform is stored in this VCD file. So I will write here GTK wave exe. Okay. Then I will write address example VCD. Okay. I just pressed tab twice. First I write written GTK wave dot exe then space then I pressed tab. I keep. I will keep on pressing tab until I reach to my desired file name. This is my desired file name. Then I will press enter. So if I press enter, I have to show the GTK waveform. So a uh, like this kind of interface will open up GTK wave. Okay. Here your test bench test bench module will be here. You double click this. Your module name will be here. Don't worry if you if these terms are new. This will be taught in the course itself. Now, if I press this module, right inside this, I have wire A, wire B, wire C, wire S. Okay. So here we see that like I can see the waveforms, how the waveforms, like how the values where like signal A is varying with respect to time. So this particular uh, application is used for seeing the waveforms, GTK wave and your VVP is seeing uh, used for seeing the print statements. So that was about how you can use uh, your VS code, your GTK wave, your iVerilog, iKeras Verilog. So I hope you have understood the part. 
now we will start with all the theory lectures and i hope you have already watched the road map to the very long so that that link will be provided in the comments below and if you did enjoy this video then make sure to like this video and make sure to subscribe to this channel if you want to learn more very long content Thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next lecture. Until then, happy learning.